All right, here I have my failed wind turbine diode. Now I'm going to test this failed diode for conductivity. I started to cut this and then I realized that I um, wanted to do this on video. Hold on, let me get my leather work base so I don't wreck my table. Now, this was my wind turbine diode and it failed on me and turned into a straight conductor. Now a diode, generally how a diode is supposed to work is it's like a one-way valve, okay? It allows energy to flow from the wind turbine through into your battery bank, but blocks energy from going back the other way. So it's a one-way valve, allows energy to flow through into your batteries, but won't allow your battery to discharge back through into your wind turbine. Now I started to cut this open a minute ago, like I said, and then I realized I should grab the camera because this could be very interesting for people. Now I had done this up very nice and proper and I did not have a heat sink on this diode. It was not getting hot because there was not really much current going through it. It's a 350 watt wind turbine and what we're looking at here with mild 10 mile an hour winds on average, uh, the day that this blew out I was getting 20 to 30 mile an hour gusts but it was not sustained it was just temporary and that was a maximum 350 watts which I am sure that this wind turbine never did reach because the the gusts up at the wind turbine tower were not that strong and my voltage never went over 15.5 volts coming out of the wind turbine so I know that this diode was not stressed highly this was a cheap eBay blocking diode. It's not your proper high-end solar wind diode, wind turbine blocking diode. It was just a cheap eBay deal. Now I had used heat shrink tubing and did it all up nice and soldered it and everything. Now generally, and you can see this is not a thin diode. Actually compared to the real wind blocking diode, the the casing is almost the same size so this was no cheap junk diode I mean it was no I actually paid a few quite a few dollars for that but it was uh, you gotta be careful if you buy from US manufacturers and US suppliers then you get better quality so I'm gonna set this on ohms now on a, on a good diode let's take for comparison a solar panel blocking diode I just purchased okay <clears throat> let's see what we have here we should have I have this set in ohms all right I have it on 200 we'll check it first there I don't know if you can see the meter let's see if we can prop this up now what it, what we should have here on a diode is that it should conduct one way and not another there there's Okay, there's nothing. Let me see that way. Let's reverse and see what happens. Okay, I think I have to go set up, turn up my setting a little. Okay, there's a lot of resistance in this, but you can see now one way it's going to conduct. All right. And you can see I've got it set on, uh, what do I have it set on? Two, uh, two, 200, I'm looking at this sideways and upside down. 2,200, 20K, 20,000 ohm setting. All right, so I've got uh, 18,000 18, ohms resistance. Now, if I turn this around, there should be no conduction. It's a one-way valve. So the diode conducts electricity in one direction, all right? But it does have a resistance, so there's a, uh, a voltage drop over that. You do have some loss. And in the other direction, it cannot conduct, okay? That's how you check a diode, a good diode. Now, my failed diode here, let me just double check that so I see which way is normal, all right, on this. So obviously the positive wire 
is going to flow from positive through. Now, a diode marking, there's this little band down here, usually a silver band on the black casing, and that's the negative side of your diode, all right? And positive is the unmarked side. So obviously with my meter, when I hook positive to positive side, it flows and conducts. It's forward conducting, all right? And this way it cannot conduct, all right? So my failed diode, if I put the positive lead on the positive side and the negative lead on the negative side, I should see, wow, look at that, 0 0.01 volts. See, that's really bad. That is essentially, oh, 0, 0.00. That right there in itself shows you there's a problem here because 0, 0, 0.00 volts, that should never, ever happen. You should, or uh, ohms, you should never see zero resistance on a diode. So it had, it was a straight conductor in one direction. Now if we try it in the other direction, what do we see here? Look at that, 0 0.01. So this diode shorted out. It was a absolute dead short. Completely dead short. And acted like a piece of wire. Let's take, for example, the wire and measure the resistance of the wire itself. I don't know if you'll be able to see, you'll have to trust me on this. I'm going to put the the uh, leads of the of the meter on the piece of wire and see I've actually got see it's almost equi equivalent to a short piece of wire in resistance this failed terribly and shorted out and conducted in both ways which caused my wind turbine to actually it caused the battery to discharge through the wind turbine and the wind turbine essentially became a DC motor a 350 watt load on my batteries which drain the batteries out completely so I hope that shows you how to test for a shorted diode and in this case a catastrophic failure which is very rare a diode um, shouldn't ever have zero resistance flowing through that is really rare but that's why my battery bank drained out through the wind turbine on that day that this diode failed.